Hey friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. Today I am in the greenhouse and oh my goodness, it is a beautiful sunshiny day. We have got gorgeous flowers blooming behind us. Um, is the season that we are itching to get in the garden, plant some of these beautiful annuals in our yard. However, for the vast majority of us, it is still a little too early. Here we are in mid-February. It is never too early to start planting though. So that is what I'm going to share with you today my top picks of annuals that are very low maintenance yet high performing in the garden. We all have, whether it is a season of life or simply a, um, an area of the garden that we just don't want to fuss over, right? Everybody cannot be a diva in the garden. We can put up with one or two divas. However, a garden full, nobody has time for that. So I am going to share with you these low maintenance annuals that are extremely high performing and they last a long time in the garden. Every single year, I will have one of these plants in my garden, like one from every category. Now, if you want some information, go ahead and, or if you're interested in buying them, you can go ahead, head over to gardenwithcreekside.com and you can look at these up to get more info and of course, order them for your yard. Um, okay, criteria, what, what it makes a low maintenance plant? First of all, they are going to be long performers. These are not just cool weather plants or you know plants that only perform for a couple of weeks at the end of the season, right? These are gonna give you loads of color and interest throughout the entire growing season. They're gonna be more drought tolerant um, once they are established. First couple of weeks, you gotta watch them. You may have to water them. Once you get them established though, you can really just kind of lay back just a little bit and then give them attention just a little bit every once in a while if you have a drought, right? Bugs are not going to like them. These are plants for me, especially in the south, where I'm thinking um, I don't want to have a problem with aphids because aphids is not are you going to get aphids, it's when are you going to get aphids. These plants tend to be much more resistant to that. And then of course the Japanese beetles. None of these plants are attacked by Japanese beetles in my garden. And I have used them in my garden for years and years and years. Because if you have Japanese beetles, you know that there are certain plants that they are attracted to. In my experience, Japanese beetles have never gotten on any of these plants. Uh, so yeah, so drought tolerant, long performing, uh, no Japanese beetles, and then as long as I know if they're more deer resistant, rabbit resistant, I will let you know on that. So grab your gardening journal, grab something to write with. Uh, I'm going to move, try to move kind of fast because there's a lot of good plants. I want to give you lots of options for them. Here we go. Color Blaze Coleus. If you've been around me for any like a hot second, you know I'm a huge fan of the Color Blaze Coleus because y'all, these plants give you tons of color and texture in your garden throughout the growing season. Now, are you gonna get flowers off of your coleus? You shouldn't, right? That is the goal of the Color Blaze Coleus is not to give you flowers, but to give you lots of color through their foliage, right? That is what we love about coleus. If you're like me and you have bigger landscape areas, right? We live in the country. We have eight and a half acres. I have big areas of land and I need to make an impact from a distance. That's why I love to use my color blaze coleus in the ground. So some of my favorite pairings will forever be, uh, of course, the Wicked Witch with the Lime Thyme. These are a beautiful pairing that really accent one another and pop off of each other. And you're gonna see them from um, a distance. So you've got that. If you want to go more on the orange side, Sedona Sunset is another favorite of mine. Um, it can do uh, it'd be more orange, it could be more red. Another thing about the Color Blaze Coleus, I think I forgot to mention, that is a huge selling point for these guys, sun or shade. So you can grow them if you have a shade garden, you can put them in there. If you have a full sun garden, you can put them in there. And if you have somewhere in between, there you go. The Color Blaze Coleus is one of those plants, when I have somebody that comes to me that says, I, I have a black thumb, I can't garden, but I want something really pretty. We start with coleus because this is kind of one of those plants that is a no fail plant. You're going to love it. If you need something smaller, look at like the mini me, mini me watermelon. Nice and short and petite. Uh, there may or may not be some new colors going to that mini me line. So just if you know if you like that shorter size, go for that watermelon and then uh, stay tuned because there might be some more colors headed your way. 
And then finally, the, the drop series, what I call the drop series anyway, is you've got chocolate drop, strawberry drop, and cherry drop. These are trailing coleus. So if you put them in a container, they're gonna act as your spiller. I personally love using the drops in the landscape because they act as a ground cover. Very low growing, but they spread out. Not an invasive kind of spread, but they fill in an area. So maybe you have a new flower bed where you need to fill in some areas between some perennials or some shrubs. Try those drop coleus. They are going to be great. Lots of color, but nice and low, wide growing. So never done color, color blaze coleus, just get one. Just try one, find a color that you like, go with that. I promise you will not be disappointed. Then Mojave Portulaca. For me in North Carolina, uh, I don't worry too much about the cold, I have to focus on the heat and the humidity. That is our big struggle. The heat and the humidity, of course, really hits like in July, August, even into September. Mojave Portulaca is going to be beautiful, bright, vibrant colors, whether it's the red, the orange, the yellow, the hot pink, really come in a lot of different colors for you to choose from. But they have um, a very like sedum-esque quality to them as far as their foliage. Nice, thick, waxy leaves that retain water really well, so they're nice and drought tolerant, and they love the sun. So if you have a full sun area, again, acts as a great ground cover, or in the container, it can spill over because they're very low but wide. Fun thing about the Mojaves is that their flowers will open and close with the sun. So you get a little, you get a little action there with your flowers, and your pollinators love them. We did the Mojave yellow in the water trough at the barn two, two years ago, and I was blown away with the number of honeybees that were attracted to these flowers. So if you want to attract more of your pollinators to your garden, and you have that sunny area that can be problematic, try the Mojaves. They are wonderful. Another one that will forever be in my garden is the Blue My Mind XL of Ovulus. This plant is I think the easiest plant I have ever grown in my entire life. I will plant it in mid-April would be the earliest because it does love it hot. So mid-April would be the earliest for me. Um, it has beautiful kind of a silvery blue foliage to it. And then it has true blue flowers that will open and close with the sun. It can be a challenge sometimes finding like true blue flowers because a lot of times in the horticultural world, they'll call a flower blue and it's really just purple. The blue my mind, true blue. For my Carolina fans, you know who I'm talking to. I got you, my people. All right, so it is a beautiful Carolina blue color and I always put this at my mailbox because that mailbox has no water source very close to it whatsoever. So if it's gonna get watered, I have to haul buckets up there to water it. Plant it in mid to late April. I may water it twice, depends on what, how the rains behave, and then I walk away and I leave it alone. It hates to be fertilized, yay. We don't, we don't wanna have to worry about that. And it really is drought tolerant once it is established. So I'm telling you, if you have a problematic area that is hot and dry and you want color there, put your Blue My Minds there as well. They are gonna be great. That was another requir requirement. See, I knew that I was forgetting something. None of these plants are gonna be food hogs. They are not gonna be ones that you're out here constantly feeding with your water-soluble fertilizer. So keep that in mind as well. Graceful grasses, big fan of grasses in the garden, whether it is an annual or a perennial, these are gonna be amazing to put into your garden. The graceful grasses are going to be your annuals. So the graceful grasses are wonderful for filling in areas that you need structure. I personally like using them in the landscape because I have such a long growing season. I can plant them in mid-April and I pull them out in after a hard freeze in November. Having that really long growing season, I find that if I put them in a container, then they start to crowd out other plants but if you have a shorter growing season or if you have a really big container that you want to fill in, put a grass in there. It gives you height. It gives you a different texture. It gives you movement in the garden, which is so important and it's often sometimes lacking. 
they will give you nice little white plumes. So whether you want the dark foliage of a purple fountain grass, maybe you want the beautiful, elegant uh, green and white variegation of Skyrocket. And then Fireworks is really fun because it has more of that reddish hue to it. And then, of course, you can't forget about the Tut family, right? So we have a whole family of Tuts. You've got Baby Tut, you've got Prince Tut, you've got Queen Tut, and then you have King Tut. These are going to be great water hog plants. So if you do have an area that is historically wet, that nothing else will grow, try a Tut. It all depends on what the ultimate size is that you are looking for. Obviously, baby is going to be the smallest and king is going to be the tallest. You can put them in ponds, you can put them in water features, and they just love water. Really nice, tight, upright habit. Of course, they have the fun little uh, fringy, they're not even plumes, they're just little fun tops on them. So try the Prince Tuts or any of those graceful grasses. They are going to be a great addition to your garden. Lantana. Lantana is often overlooked in the spring garden center because it is not um, in its prime. Right now, I've got an amnesia behind me that loves the cool weather. Lantana loves the hot weather. So in your garden center in the early spring, you might notice there are beautiful, nice kind of a green habit to it, maybe one or two flowers, and that is it. If you are like me and you have areas that are hot and dry, or you deal with high humidity, again, July, August, September, into October, your lantanas are going to be in all of their glory and extremely happy. Deer resistant, rabbit resistant. Again, not, not a water hog, not a huge fertilizer hog. I always will put lantana by the side of my driveway in an area that has zero irrigation in it, right? Now, it does have some nice, rich, organic material in there, but there is no irrigation, and I do not water it past the first two weeks. I leave it alone. Your butterflies are attracted to it, your hummingbirds, your pollinators, and it comes in a range of colors. You want some more softer white, uh, paler yellow, go with pina colada. You want a really bright, bright yellow and a solid yellow, try lemon zest or citron. You want orange, you're a Clemson Tiger fan and you want some beautiful true orange, go with the marmalade, it is a great one. My NC State fans, you want red, go with red zone. Um, we're pulling out all the college teams here, aren't we? Uh, if you want th some of the pinks, you've got pink berry blend. You've got, there's like a citrus blend. You name the color and they're basically going to have it. There's even a purple one, right? So lots and lots of different color options for you in your lantanas, but just perform. When my garden is looking tired in August, my lantana is thriving love this. I don't prune it. I don't deadhead it. You plant it, make sure it's established, and then walk away. It's the kind of plant we love to have. The Diamond Series. So Diamond Series of Euphorbias. This too has three different ones in here. So it all is going to depend on how you want to use it in your garden. So we're going to run through them because sometimes it can be a bit confusing. So we're going to start big. You have Diamond Mountain. As the name suggests, this is going to be a big plant. By the end of my growing season, I can easily have it like three feet tall, two feet wide, really beautiful, large, light, airy presence in the garden. So if you are looking in the landscape or a really big container that you want height and some really um, airy white flowers to it, then Diamond Mountain is going to be a good one for you. If Diamond Mountain is too big, but you love that look, go with Diamond Frost. Diamond Frost and Diamond Mountain in the garden center are really hard to tell apart. It's because they look very similar, but it's that their ultimate height, their ultimate maturity is gonna be quite different. Diamond Frost is much more manageable in that like 12 to 18 inches tall. It does great in containers. I use it in my hanging baskets. I use it in mixed containers where it just, like if you're using it with super tunias, they just mix in together and are very happy. So the Diamond Frost, same light airy look, but gonna be a much more manageable size. And then finally we have Diamond Snow. Diamond Snow is that plant where I tell people if you want a solid concentration of white, a nice pop of white, go with Diamond Snow. Really compact habit, nice and thick, pure white flowers, and you're going to get a mass pop of white in a container or the landscape. So those are those three diamonds, y'all, easiest things ever.
I have personally found that they do quite well even in a shade garden. If they even just get a couple of hours, whether it's morning sun or afternoon sun, then they can handle those more shadier conditions as well, but they certainly can do full sun. The Sunstar Pentas, you've got lots of colors. You've got, uh, I think there's a total of four colors. You have got lavender, you have got two shades of pink, a nice soft baby doll pink, and then a hot pink, and then you have red. The first thing that I really notice as a gardener with my Pentas is one, they love sun. They have huge flowers. And uh, the one thing that I was most impressed with is that the Japanese beetles do not like them. When the other plants in my garden were getting annihilated by the Japanese beetles, not my pentas. They were tough and strong, blooming their heads off, and not one Japanese beetle was on them. The pentas, container, great. Landscape, great. You got it. This will do really, really well. Huge flower heads on them. There is a cluster of little smaller flowers that are like star-shaped, sun, star, pentas. Right, and so you get this continuous display throughout the growing season. As the plant grows, so do your flower blooms. And it's just a beautiful, big pops of color, especially for those nice, sunny gardens. They do need the sun. <sighs> Y'all, I am in love with rock and salvias. They are just wonderful performers that will go all season long. Continuous bloomers. Do not be affected at all whatsoever by your Japanese beetles, and they are continuous bloomers. That's why I tend to prefer the rockin' salvias, the annuals, over the perennial salvias because of their continuous flowers. The hummingbirds love this plant. They will completely buzz right by you and just within like a foot of you to get to that plant. If you're around me, you know that Vermillionaire is my number one plant to recommend for hummingbirds. But the problem with Vermillionaire is that the Japanese beetles do like it. They will go on that plant. If you have that problem, try the rockin' salvias. It does not matter really what color, whether you wanna do rockin' deep purple, you wanna do rockin' fuchsia, rockin' blue suede shoes, or playing the blues. They love these plants, as do your bumblebees and your honeybees. They're going to get to be a good size. So if they start to get a little bit too big, whether you have it in a container or the landscape, don't worry about it. Just go in and give it a little haircut. When you trim them, they will actually get tighter and fuller. Now, do you have to do that? Absolutely not. But if you want to do it and keep them a little bit on a more manageable side, you can do that. Or maybe you have a new puppy and the puppy like breaks half the plant. Don't worry, it will regrow. Maybe you got small kids or maybe you got teenagers and somebody runs through it or drops a basketball in the middle of the plant. Don't worry, the plant will be fine. It will regrow and be tighter and fuller and even more beautiful the second time around. Suncredible sunflowers are going to be a continuous blooming sunflower, perfect for the landscape or a really large container. I personally like to put them in the landscape because of our long growing season. By the end of the season, this plant can be three to four feet tall and wide and covered in flowers. You have two options as far as colors. You have Suncredible Yellow, which is that true classic yellow sunflower, right? Or you can go Suncredible Saturn, which is going to be a beautiful bicolor. Lots of options there. Um, as all sunflowers, they do want to have those full sun growing conditions. They are a nice tight habit on them. They make great cut flowers. And in fact, the more you cut on the plant for those cut flowers, the tighter the plant's gonna be and the more flowers it is going to produce. So I encourage you to go out there and cut the flowers off of your Suncredible sunflowers because it just makes a tighter, happier plant that produces flowers all season long. We forever will have the Suncredibles in our garden. Uh, we've had them for the past two years here at the nursery. And then like this year, we're gonna put it in the berm to have a nice big effect. So check out those Suncredible sunflowers. A plant that really gets overlooked a lot. I'm on a personal mission to bring back Cleome. Cleome is uh, what I call a grandmama plant, right? So your grandmother probably grew it in her garden. Uh, it got kind of a bad rap because it would drop hundreds of seeds in a year, which could be good or it could be bad, right? It would good because you get tons of volunteers from year to year, bad because you get tons of volunteers from year to year. It's all about how you look at it. The senoritas from Proven Winners are sterile. They are not gonna drop seeds in your garden. Um, they are thornless. 
Historically, Cleomis would have thorns, and historically, Cleomis would have a fragrance to them. People would say uh, they smell like skunk, so it wasn't a pleasant fragrance. These are not going to have that odor, that smell to them. The reason I love Cleomis is because, one, you've got two colors. You've got Senorita Rosalita, a beautiful pink rose color. Then you've got Senorita Blanca, which is a nice, pure white. They are going to give you height in your garden and a completely different flower texture. So you can pair them with your petunias. You can pair them with your, um, your pentas. You can pair them with your rock and salvias or your suncredible sunflowers because the flower on them is completely different, very upright habit on the plant. So it really pairs quite nicely with a whole host of other flowers in your garden even shrubs and perennials. You don't have to put it just with annuals. You can mix it into other areas of your garden. And then impatience. I love impatience. Again, another grandmama plant, right? Because your grandmama probably had impatience. Well, the impatience of today are not quite the same as the impatience of, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. If you've got sun, go with the sun patience. They truly can take full sun. I have sun patients just about every year on my back patio. And y'all, when I say this place is hot, it is hot. It's got, it is surrounded by stone. It is probably the hottest part of my garden, but the sun patients just rock it out. Continuous flowers on it, nice mounded habit. By the end of the season, they will get some height to them, which is lovely. You can do like solid whites. You can do pinks. You can do reds. You can do oranges. Like you name the color, you're going to have it. If you have shade, you want to try the Rocapucos. The Rocapucos are a double impatient that are for shade gardens. So whether you want to put it in a container or the landscape, either one will do great. Mine actually get about four hours of sun in the morning, four to five hours. They handle it well as long as I keep them moist. Most definitely need to have a break from the hot afternoon sun. You do not want to have your, your impatience, your Rocapuco impatience, in the hot afternoon sun, they will just melt and they will just actually just wither away before your very eyes. They don't like to be fertilized. The more you fertilize in patients, the less they flower. Hello, we love that, right? Um, the Rocapucos come in a range of colors. Whether you want a pure white, you want the purple of wisteria, you want a nice soft pink of apple blossom, you want a bold pink, you've got coral reef, there's an orange, like literally there's just about a color um, in the rainbow for your Rocapuco impatience. Nice mounded habit. The only thing that I would caution you about is if you want to put the Rocapucos in a container, just know that this is what I would consider to be a messy plant in the fact that it's going to continually drop those flower petals. So you may not want to put it on your front porch. You may not want to put it on your patio if you want to keep it really not the floor nice and neat and clean because they're going to continually drop those flower petals. I used to put it on my back porch um, on our, where we would sit in a little nook and the constant dropping of the petals drove me crazy. So I've eliminated that and I just had them in the landscape in my shade gardens and could not be happier. Massive flower color in your garden in the shade, which can be sometimes problematic, that just bloom all season long. So sun patience for the sun, Rocapucos for the shade. Last but certainly not least, begonias. Again, another grandmama plant, right? I mean, there, there is a reason that these plants have lasted uh, for this long. It's because they are such great plants. Now, when people come to the nursery and they're asking for these, you know, I don't have a lot of time to fuss over it. I need an, quote, easy plant that I can work with. I will take them to begonias. And sometimes I get that look of like, you're giving me a begonia? Like, what in the world? Y'all, you're going to trust me on this. Um, if you want some height in your garden, you need to try the Surefire Begonias. Surefires will do sun or shade and anything in between. So it does not matter what your, your sun conditions are, they can handle it. They're going to get some height to them. I think the tag may say somewhere between like 18 to 24 inches tall. Um, in the landscape, of course, they get nice and big. That's what I prefer to use them in. I have also used them in containers and they are stunning. Like if you have a nice big pot, you can put them in there just as what we call a monoculture. Maybe you put two or three in your big container or maybe you pair them with a petunia or a coleus or what have you. They do great in containers, great in the landscape, sun or shade, and there are four in the Surefire series. So you have Surefire White, you should have Surefire Rose, 
red and then cherry cordial. So you have got or cordial cherry. I always get it mixed up. Cherry cordial, cordial cherry, whichever one, you know what I'm talking about. Dark foliage, red flower. There you go. Um, so gorgeous, nice habit to them. Drought tolerant, great in the landscape, great in containers. Now, if Surefire is too big for you, maybe you want to try the double ups. Double ups are going to be have a completely different um, habit to them. They're going to be nice and mounded. Uh, they will get some height to them by the end of the season, but they have this perfect mounded habit to them, absolutely covered in small double flowers. They too are going to be either sun or shade, anything in between. I have grown them in full sun. I have grown them in full shade. I have put them in containers and I have put them in the landscape absolutely love them. We're actually going to be using a lot of the double ups and the surefires in our gardens at the house this year. So versatile, so easy, but beautiful plants that give me loads of flowers. So in your double ups, you have got, um, you have basically a white, a pink, and a red. So you have lots of options there for you. I know that we kind of moved quickly through all of these plants, but these are beautiful low maintenance annuals. They're gonna last you that beautiful one season, right? That's what an annual does, one season, but they are long lasting throughout your growing season. You do not have to fuss over them. They are not divas, they are not high maintenance, but they just perform day in and day out and give you color and texture and flower and they support your pollinators, they support your hummingbirds and your butterflies. All of the things that we want to have in our garden, these plants will give you. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informative and inspirational and uh, it's going to be a great growing season. Enjoy the process, have fun, make your notes because when you come to the garden center, you might kind of lose your mind just a little bit. So have a plan, have that shopping list, but have fun friends. As always, we appreciate you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.